that's the, that's the hardest man yeah you have to be you have to be your mentality has to be super strong for these comments that the fans make so we've all seen our favorite USMNT players sporting some pretty unruly facial hair these days and I guess you can't blame them with all the liberties that guys have been taking during quarantine luckily with this tool guys don't have to settle for all that nasty hair anymore our sponsor for this video is Manscaped, a premier razor for men that works below the waist, but also on your face. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and we have an exclusive offer for one goal followers and subscribers. 20% off and free shipping with the code one goal us at manscaped.com included as a part of manscaped's perfect package 3.0 kit is the best downstairs trimmer ever the lawnmower 3.0 their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology in addition this trimmer comes with an led light for a more precise shave and is waterproof to make your shower shave clean and easy. You also get deodorants, moisturizers, a travel bag, and some boxers, including the Perfect Package 3.0. All this to keep you feeling fresh and clean where it matters most. Remember, 20% off and free shipping with code one goal US for any products at manscaped.com. Sebastian, thanks for joining us today. We're super excited to uh, talk about how you've been doing in Mexico and everything that went down with Olympic qualifying. So yeah, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, overall, what are your main takeaways from the Olympic qualifying camp? Um, you know, there's not too many takeaways. Obviously the, the ultimate goal was qualifying for the, for the Olympics. And, and obviously as everyone knows, we didn't do it. You know, the last time we qualified was 2008 and yeah, it's, it's a huge embarrassment. You know, like I wrote on my Instagram, I think it's a, disrespect towards our crest really because you know we had talented players we had all the support from our staff you know everything for us to be able to qualify um but the only thing I could take away from myself personally was you know getting getting back to playing you know getting back to the rhythm of the game starting playing in games and and stuff like that and being able to represent my country again um but it was very very hard you know truly I felt like we missed a couple key players that have been in the process of the national team for a long time, which, which were Eric Williamson and, and, and Jeremy Abobasi. You know, those are two players that, you know, surprised me on why I didn't get called up, you know, and that's a lot of decisions that the coaching staff make, you know, but, um, but personally, you know, I, I feel like we could have done a lot of things different. You know, we, um, I, I personally feel like I was too worried about the structure of what they wanted us to do instead of playing free and enjoying the game, you know, and, and I, I, I get that, you know, maybe, you know, they want us to play a similar style to the senior national team, but truly we don't have the players that are on the senior national team. You know, we're not as gifted as Christian Pulisic. We're not as gifted as these guys, you know what I mean? And, Mm -hmm. And um, and for us to try to kind of mimic their 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 style of play is difficult because at the end of the day, you know, we're we're um, we're in a, in a different environment against countries that sit back and, and try to wait for our mistake to punish us. And that's really what what it was like. At the end of the day, we did what what Honduras did and we didn't was um, play with our hearts out, really, you know, and, and having passion you know to be able to fight out there and, and, and getting three points and and advancing to to Tokyo you know we we didn't have none of that you know and at the end of the day um like I said um I felt like I was too too worried about you know that structure um and and I feel like maybe you know things could have been different you know we we had a lot of players playing in different positions and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that and reality is we're pros we're we're adults we always have to adapt to, to um, what they ask us. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of difficult when, when um, 
we're we're playing in a really hard environment against countries that you know especially Honduras I felt like they're a really good team but you know like Dominican Republic and Costa Rica they're just teams that you know wanted to sit back and punish us so it was very difficult moment for myself as being one of the older older players on the team um and I know it was the same thing for JT and, and Jackson you know that we're we're the, one of the three players that have been on the process for, you know, since we were 14 years old. And just to take a dream like this away was was kind of really hard. You know, it was really, really hard on me. Yeah, so I, I just want to jump in for a second and talk about that structure that you said was kind of difficult to operate in. Because from the outside looking in, I'm watching, and what was the, in the ideal scenario, how were we supposed to gr- create chances? Like, what did Christ exactly tell you guys? Where were the goals going to come from? I personally think, you know, Jason Christ has been a tremendous coach, you know, throughout the 23 cycle when we went to Spain. You know, we almost, we got really good results against, you know, Brazil. I think we lost 1-0. We could have tied 1-1 and played Canary Islands and stuff like that. And I I, I really like Jason, you know, but – um I feel like it's not up to him to make decisions, you know, and, and the, the goals were for us to get forward, to make a lot of runs in behind and, you know, um, and try to create chances that way and, and kind of keep the ball and, then, you know, kind of, like I said, runs in behind, but that was kind of difficult because every team knew that we were going to do that, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, I, soccer's this way, man, you know, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't score goals, if you don't play, if you don't attack, and if you don't create anything, then you, of course, are myself, including myself, but including like the rest of the forwards, we're going to get killed by the media. You know, obviously we're going to, it's, it's soccer's that way. If you don't score, if you don't assist, you don't do anything, then, then, you know, we have to get used to that too. We're going to get bashed by media. But at the end of the day, we never had clear chances. We never had a structure where we wanted to, you know, let's, let's keep the ball. Let's, you know, let's, let's make them run. And then we, we kind of, do our own thing and, and, you know, play how we know how to play. It was, it was kind of difficult, you know, and, and um, I don't know, you know, you can, you can blame a lot of things, but the ultimate thing was we didn't qualify. And that's, like I said, that's disrespect towards our crest. You know, we, we need to have guts, you know, to, to show our face in front of the media and say, you know, this is crazy. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we're one, we're another cycle that didn't qualify. And I hate that, man. I like, I love to win. But I hate to be known as that player that didn't qualify for the Olympics. Damn, that's definitely uh, a, t- a difficult situation, right? But um, yeah, another another thing. So if, if you were in that position again where you were able to be on the pitch and, and be able to f- play more freely, were you trying to create more off the wings? Like h- how would you have changed it? Uh, from your perspective to play more attacking or to, to create the chances that you guys couldn't get? Yeah, well, I mean, this goes to everyone else. You know, this could have been a situation where we all could have been a little bit more sharper. You know, obviously it doesn't help that the MLS will stop four months or three months, whatever, and then coming into a tournament like this and trying to get something out of it, it's difficult, man. We have to understand that these players just are barely starting preseason and it's hard, you know. Our sharpness is not going to be there. But we were a month earlier than everyone else, I could imagine, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and we, we just I, I personally think, you know, um, play with play free and, and do what you love to do, man. You know, at the end of the day, um, you're going to make mistakes always. You know, for me, it's kind of weird because I come back to my club, you know, and and I score a goal. And I'm not just saying that I scored a goal because of like coincidence, you know, it was I feel like it was, I scored a goal because after all the hard work that I've done after all my injuries, but to be able to be back on the field and do what's best for myself and my body, you know, it has finally paid off. And the reality is, you know, I, I want to be that player. You know, I, I wish I was that 10 in the U S national team right. right now and qualifying saying, you know, shoot. So has so got three, four assists or he's got two goals or, and stuff like that. When in reality, I don't think that one assist was anything, you know, that's just something else. You know, I really wish I could have helped more and, and given more, but mm-hmm. it's hard, man. You, no one was happy with the way we played. And, and, and that's not, that's something we shouldn't be proud of because the players we did have at camp 
our players that are capable of, you know, doing a great job, you know, and, and doing a, a really good job to qualify to Tokyo. We just, it was really hard. I don't know what, how to explain it. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, to kind of touch on something you were just mentioning there, um, there are a lot of t- young, talented USMNT players and, and especially a part of that camp. So what players kind of have impressed you the most? Maybe some of the newer ones that have come in who really, st- you know, stuck out to you and, and impressed you. Yeah, I really liked, um, you know, Tanner. You know, he was a player that was not even on the roster, but, you know, he, he came in. It was awesome. You know, um, the center back that plays at the Revs. Um, Henry Kessler. Kessler. Henry. Henry, really good player, you know, and, and he showed out, tried to play out of the back. And, um, yeah, it was awesome to see. You know, obviously, our front three, you know, we we're, we're a very talented group. You know, we had Georgie, we had Jay Lou, we had um, Hassani, we had a lot of good players, you know, and, and Jesus and stuff like that, you know. And, you, and with those names, you think, you know, we should be good to qualify, you know. At the end of the day, I don't think it was good enough from everyone, including myself. And, and you know, maybe we could have changed a lot of things. I don't know. I, I, it's a lot of unanswered questions, but it's difficult when, when in reality, you know, we didn't qualify. Yeah, for sure. So to kind of switch gears now to something a little more positive, and that's uh, <laughs> your time in Mexico. Yeah. Um, so you, you've bounced back now from pretty two, like the first two serious injuries you've ever had in your career. Cause prior to last year, you'd never really been injured before. Um, but you're healthy now and you're back at it. So I just want to know like, what's it like now to be healthy again and regaining your fitness? Yeah. Well, injuries are tough, man. I, I, I can't explain enough and stress enough on how, how things change and how soccer works. Sometimes you're up here and sometimes you're at the very bottom, you know, and, and, you know, this is where the soccer part is really difficult and your mentality has to be strong because, you know, I, after the first injury, it was four months that I was out and then literally a week, two weeks or no, a month before I had to go to qualifying, I get hurt again. And I'm like, shoot, you know, I, I need to go to qualifying, but it's all up here too. And, and, and how hard are you going to work to be able to come back stronger than, than where you left off? But, you know, I'm super happy I'm back. You know, um, uh, I scored my uh, a goal literally last Sunday. And, you know, I'm so happy to be back, you know, helping the group, you know, the way I can help the group. You know, at the end of the day, I went from a starter here at Pumas to, to these injuries. And now I think I'm uh, starting on Friday. So <laughs> fingers that's crossed. What, that's the that's what it looks like right now. So um, I'm looking forward to, to not letting it go anymore. Yeah. So talking about like getting your starting spot, you, when you made the move to Pumas, that's when you really became a full-time starter. Whereas at RSL, you were starting some games, you're not starting the other games. Is it, what is it about the Mexican league that do you, th- that has allowed you to be more successful or just like, um, what the is support. it about the league? That, what is it? The support, you know, like the, the confidence I got from from the coaching staff that was here, you know, I I feel like, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm talking too much, but maybe, I, maybe RSL felt like I was just another player for them, you know what I mean? And, and here, I wasn't just an any other player. I, they felt like I was a special player, and that's why I started, you know, eight games of the, of the ten games that, I, that they played, you know, obviously – one of them I missed because of a red card and the other one was because I was going to, to qualifying, you know, mm-hmm. the early years before COVID or the early year. So um, it's just that really, you know, when, when you get a coach that loves you and likes you and, and you take advantage of that, you're going to start a hundred percent. And this coach now, you know, I don't know where he's at. You know, he's, he's a really special, special player or was a special player in the past. And he's a Real Madrid legend and, and, you know, hopefully one, one of these days I um, – well, not these days because I'm still under contract, but one of these uh, years I can meet, meet back with them and, and, and play together again. Yeah. So from your perspective and in the time you've spent in both leagues, which, which league is more difficult and why? Here, uh, it's – you know, the, the MLS is growing a ton. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for my national team teammates, you know, the ones that are there now that are playing, that are starting, 
the league is growing, you know, um, and, and, and everything's getting a lot better in the MLS. I can tell you that, you know, they're, you can see them now compete in the champions league that just came back on today. Um, and, you know, here it's just too difficult, man. There's a lot of good players all around, you know, all the clubs here, they have so many good players. There's a lot of players that play for their international countries, you know, and their starters for their international countries that, that are not just that are on Tigres or on America or on our team or, or Cruz Azul, but every other team has really good players. You know, it's a, it's a really competitive league. I just feel like, you know, it's just, it's just hard every weekend. You know, you're, you're, you're playing a final and especially now that we're almost in last place, we're just a couple of places away from, you know, entering, you know, playoffs. So we need to kind of, you know, scoop it up so we can, so we can get in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I saw a stat that I think uh, if you look at like the average Liga MX roster, they have like seven or eight DPs, like technically yeah. under MLS rules per team. Um, whereas, you know, MLS teams are lucky if they have three. Um, yeah. So the, yeah, the, I think that I agree. I think the quality is much higher and something else that I think is much more difficult about Liga MX is just the atmospheres, the atmosphere of each game and then the media pressure. So yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, you touch that's on that. the, that's the like, hardest, man. Yeah. You have to be, you have to be, your mentality has to be super strong for these comments that the fans make. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's so hard. You know, I, I, I lived through it, you know, and now, like I said, soccer, you could be up here when, when, when you score goals and you assist, but when you're hurt or you're not playing or you're not doing the right thing, you're, you're probably the worst player for the fan base. You know what I mean? And that's just how soccer works really. But, but I feel like someday us will get there. You know, it's going to be, a, I feel like someday the MLS is going to be an important league to the world. And that's going to be awesome. That's going to be the day where, where us national teams finally going to be a top team in the world. You know what I mean? So I, I'm excited for the future. I'm, ex I've always said it, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for what these guys do, like Weston, you know, Christian, you know, Gio and all these guys, what they do for, for, for the U.S. national team, really, because they're putting this country in a high environment. So it's really cool to see, you know, you got Weston scoring a bicycle kicks against Barcelona. So amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's cool, better. you know? Yeah, definitely. And, and I guess, you know, talking about the future and you're saying that, you know, the U S will be a very competitive country in the future, you know, with the Olympics in the rear view now, what comes next for you for the national team? Yeah. I mean, I've always, although I haven't even made my senior national team debut. So, and I'm getting a little older than everyone else that, that actually debuts. So uh, um, I'm focused on, on myself, trying to get fitter every day, trying to get strong, you know, be fit. Obviously it's not easy with all these injuries, but um, but be a starter again, my club, you know, so I can get called up to the national team. Because I think I always I always see soccer this way, where it doesn't matter where you play, but if you're playing 90 minutes compared to another player anywhere else in the world, you're still gonna you're still 90 minutes game game type um, player fit. So um, I feel like the opportunity will come. I just have to be ready for it. And and you know, I for me, you know, I I, I really want to go to you know, uh, what is it? Gold cup. So yep. that's and nation's cups too difficult with all these European players, but you know, gold cup is a really goal for me, a big, a nice goal that I can, you know, create and see, you know, let, why not? You know what I mean? I want to be there, you know? And, and, um, and I feel like players are always going to get a second chance, you know, obviously even players that fail to qualify for the Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like um, hopefully gold cups won for me so I can get a revenge. Nice. Yeah. I like that mentality. You're hungry for more. So you think it's really like fitness that that's going to help you solidify your, your spot for the senior team or like, what do you need to improve on really? For the senior national team? Yeah. Or for my club? For, for both. Yeah, I guess. For my club is yeah. Getting fit, playing, you know, do what I did last game in 10 minutes, really, you know, I almost assisted and, and obviously scored. Um, but yeah, when you start scoring and assisting, you start making noise and that's when the national team should come calling, you know? And, and so for me, it's just be focused, you know, um, I'm really excited that the U S national team has a big future, you know, a really cool future for their players. And, 
and I still want to be a part of it. I still want to go to Gold Cup, like I said. And, and for me to get a chance at the Gold Cup, you know, it's playing, you know, playing 100% with my club and, and doing well for my club. So um, hopefully that's how it is, you know, and, and hopefully I get myself a roster spot at Gold Cup. Okay. I love it. We'd love to see you there, man. Awesome. <laughs> it's, it's tough, man. You know, I, I wish a lot of things, but sometimes like at, at the – at the qualifying, you know, there's things that you, you think you can do, but you're not ready for it because you're mm -hmm. not game fit. You know, it's mm -hmm. one thing is being fit and running five miles every day and, and you know, doing the exercise they, that they want you to do in club. But the other thing is playing, you know, and, and being in a rhythm of a match of a player that's getting close to you. What are you going to do? You know, or like little tr tricks or I don't know, like stuff like that, that, that you do in games to, to be different because it's not easy, really. You know, you're these these guys are all playing in their countries, you know, full 90 minutes. And, you know, I was a player that was coming back from injury. So it's tough, you know? Um, yeah. So one thing I'm like curious about, you talked when we were talking about Olympic qualifying, kind of like the difference between Honduras and the U S and it was that like that grit. And it seemed like Honduras, they just, they played with a lot of heart. Right. And that's historically, that's kind of like the one thing the U S has had going for it. Right. Like yeah. back in the, the early days, right. Where we didn't have, players like you that were creative and could make things happen with the ball at their feet. We just had like athletes that worked hard. And while I feel like as we've gotten more creative players, we've kind of lost our way and that we don't always play with that grittiness and that like that, that can do attitude. So what do you think from your perspective needs to be done for us to kind of get that back and reestablish that as part of like the, the program's identity and while still maintaining that creative aspect that we've kind of, started to transition to yeah well soccer has changed you know what I mean and and you know when I was at the qualifying you know we watched the Jamaica game you know the senior national team and and these guys you know they put a they put a stamp on it you know what I mean like these guys like they start you know they they believe they're the best which that's why they're playing in the best country or best teams in the world and and they they just play you know what I mean and and do you know, what they do really do to not hold the other team and say, you know, you guys are going to get a chance. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's really about, too. You know, if you win the first 15 minutes of a soccer game and the last 15 minutes of one, you know, you, you have a better chance of winning the game. And, and you know, that I use the example of the senior national team because at the end of the day, these guys are so special, you know, um, like – you know, like I, I, I keep saying Christian and, you know, Serginho and all these guys, but these guys are so special that um, they set a stamp at the beginning of the game that they're the best, you know, and, and if anything, the other team should be the team that's competing against them. We should never feel like less than anyone else, really, you know, and, and that's really what it's like. You know, at the end of the day, it felt like at, at qualifying, it felt like we were so good the first 15 minutes against Honduras trying to play out of the back. And it felt like, boom, like, bro, what is going on? You know what I mean? Like, what just happened? You know, and then you, you start, um, you start, like, seeing the game differently. You start seeing Honduras tack, and you start seeing a lot of things, and you're like, shoot, man, like, did we really have to get this far for us to realize that, you know, that we're about to get eliminated from Tokyo? And, and it's, it's hard, you know. For me, Ochoa was probably one of our best players that I forgot to mention was by far one of our best players, you know. He can make mistakes always, you know, and, and that's always going to be in soccer, but it's how you get back and, and, and you know, keep and push yourself, you know what I mean? For me, he was a phenomenal job, and soccer's like that. You know, unfortunately, soccer, you're, like I said, you're, you're at the very top or you're very low, and Ochoa, you know, it was a mistake, but at the end of the day, we, we could have done a lot of things different as a team, to avoid situations like that anyways, you know what I mean? We could have been, you know, zero, zero at half, you know, we could have, you know, been one zero at half, you know, or up one zero, you know, and it's just like that. Soccer works that way. Sometimes you're not going to be at your best, but you just got to be prepared for the worst always. But yeah, I feel like, like I, like you mentioned, I feel like it's that grit comes from um, where you play kind of and where and how things are going to be, in the future, you know, I feel like, like I said, these European players come with a different style, a lot of quicker, a lot better, you know, obviously the European soccer is the best in the world. So 
um, then you, you you get another player that's that's playing in the MLS. I feel like you're you were all growing together, you know, and and I and I really do believe um, the U.S. national team is going to be top ten in the world in the future. So um, I'm I'm super excited. I agree. Cool. Um, thank you for that. So now we'll kind of move on to some rapid fire questions. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, just kind of first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, uh-huh. All right. So uh, first off is who's the, de- the toughest defender you faced? Uh, shoot. T- toughest defender. Or, you know, this guy from Tigres, Chaka Rodriguez, that plays on the, on the Mexican national team. You know, he was hard. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> so him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I was trying right. to find a figure, you know, everything. No worries. Yeah. So our. Uh, keep going here uh given give us your uh dream five aside team using players that you have played with already so either at like real or pumas or the national team um your dream five aside team that i've played with yes um so do i include myself you're the you're the like the coach so okay, you're there's five players yeah okay um I have to go with Beckerman one um, that I've played with. Shoot. Can't remember. <laughs> Another one's Charlie Gonzalez. He went from Pumas to Tigres. He's good. Uh, um, then we got to go with this defender. Oh, you know, I played with Weston. You know, he came with us to a trip in England. There you so go. I'll include him. Um, Weston, and I need two more. Um. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? And I'll just do. Uh, who else? Who else? Damn, bro. <laughs> that I played. I like. I really like Albert Rusnak at Salt Lake. Nice. He's really technical and stuff like that. And Savarino. Yeah, he's. I loved him. He was so raw, and I feel like he'd be yeah. good at five aside, you know, because he's crafty and quick. Damn, he's so good, man. Yeah, he's sick. Um, all right, cool. So, you know, you having played in MLS, you've played in pretty much every league. I mean, every stadium that there is in the U.S. And with Olympic qualifying, or <laughs> sorry, uh, World Cup qualifying uh, coming, what do you think should be our home stadium? Well, it's because I've never gotten to experience, you know, a senior national team trip, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for me, the atmosphere in L.A. FC, L.A. FC or, um, or Portland, that's like really the, the best fan base or Atlanta, you know, when they were mm-hmm. getting like 70K people. For me, top, you know, obviously it's, it's L.A. FC, Portland, Atlanta and Seattle. Okay. Nice. So, but I, I choose L.A. FC for sure. Yeah, you're back in your hometown. Yeah, that'd be really cool, huh? Yeah. Nice. All right, cool. Um, all right, here's a good one. Uh, what's your favorite type of goal or the best type of goal? A long-range shot, first-time volley, or dribble three players and round the keeper? Uh, Carlos Vela would be cool, huh? Like <laughs> dribble three players and, and then the goalie, like the goal against San Jose. Yeah, that that'd be really cool, man. You you just you're just seen different, really. If you do that, I feel like, like you gotta be totally three in the players zone. on and the goalie. <laughs> All right, favorite club growing up? Real Madrid. All right, what's your uh, what's your favorite skill move? Um, I just cut in, man. Like Messi, you know, he cuts in left, <laughs> I cut in right. <laughs> I cut in. I like to do the snake, you know. Mm-hmm. The snake, like the Ronaldinho snake, that was that's my all time favorite player. Him and R nine, Ronaldo, the bald one. <laughs> yeah, I was playing. Uh, both of them always played with a smile on their face. Yeah, I always try. I always try to, unless I'm always getting kicked or <laughs> or uh, the ref gets on my nerve, you know. <laughs> <laughs>